it's Eleanor and today I'm here with a book review of David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas. Now, this was released in 2004 and it won the Richard and Judy Prize and it was shortlisted for the Man Booker among others. This book is a Marmite book. I for one loved it and thoroughly enjoyed it and so did many people I know but also lots of people didn't really enjoy it and thought it was really bad so it really kind of depends on your taste. Uh, Cloud Atlas is a postmodernist piece of work, which means that it's a narrative technique where there's fragmentation or the narrative is unreliable. Um, and this is the first postmodernist fiction that I've read, and I find it really, really interesting. And I think I'm definitely going to read more because of it. Cloud Atlas is basically a series of short stories which are all intertwined with each other. So, and they range from, I think the first story is in 1850, kind of California gold rush time, um, but set in, you know, the Chatham Islands, kind of down the Pacific. And then it goes all the way throughout across history and it ends with the uh, post-apocalyptic kind of setting uh, in, down in Hawaii. So you span, you know, across all time and space and not space, but the world. The story is very unique in the way that it's told, in that each narrative is split in half. So basically what it goes like, you read narrative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and all of them, 1 to 5, are split in half, but 6 is full, and that's kind of the pinnacle of it, arguably, you could say. And then you go back down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so you end exactly where you started, with number 6, the post-apocalyptic narrative, it's kind of focusing into the centre of all of it. The way that the book has, was structured, I know put off a lot of people because they felt that, you know, it cut off in the middle and it wasn't, you know, you couldn't really get into it once you started really enjoying a character, you couldn't, you know, it split and then you had to kind of remember it and then go back and everything like that. But personally, for me, I found that it really worked with the type of book because it kind of emphasised the idea that they're all interlinked and furthered the um, repetitive and thematic ideas within the novel. Each narrative is executed in a different way which really shows off Mitchell's writing style. So the first one is a diary, the second one is letters, the third one is written in kind of like a you know a crime thriller really quick and easy fast paced to read. The fourth one I'm trying to think that's just like a normal um there isn't really anything special about that one it's very funny though. The fifth one is in kind of uh, someone telling their st retelling their stories in an interview process, and the last one is um, the main character again telling back his story to kind of his grandchildren, and is a very distinct narrative. Quite difficult to get through at the beginning, but once you get into that kind of style, then you get really used to it, and it can be quite enjoyable. Um, like I said, all the narratives are different, which makes each story and each person very, very unique and really, really interesting. You can really kind of um, get to know them throughout their writing style. So now I'll tell you what each of the narratives are about. So the first narrative, like I said earlier, is set in 1850-ish, you know, gold rush kind of era, and they're in the Chatham Islands, and Adam Ewing, our San Francisco lawyer, he's waiting to go back home for his, whilst his boat is being repaired. And it kind of focuses on the two tribes there, the Maori and the Moriari, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not 100% sure, but it focuses on them and kind of how um, and race and how and slavery and how Ewing kind of interacts with them. The second narrative, um, the letters are from um, Robert Frobisher, who once who's British. He wants to be a musician and he goes to Belgium and to seek out this famous musician and to c kind of become his apprentice. And his letters are to his um, like love at home, which is and that's my favourite one. I really like Robert Frobisher so much. I love his character and it, I yeah. So, and it's easy to read and I really, really like it. Well, it's not, he's very posh. Um, and the way that he describes things are sometimes hilarious. Okay. So the third narrative is kind of 1970s, 1980s America. Um, you have Louisa Ray. She's the main character. And she's on like a, a, she's a journalist and she investigates this big company. And it's really fast and action packed and it's really, really good. The fourth one is set in London 2012. Ish, um, and it follows Timothy Cavendish, and he's this old man, and he, um, oh, it's hilarious this one. So he ends up getting trapped in a um, uh, old people's home, and he's trying to escape, and it's hilarious, and he's just his character shines so through so much with the writing. 
The fifth narrative is um, we follow this woman called uh, Somni451 and she's a clone and this is kind of a, a dystopian sort of setting and you know it's about her kind of rising up and that sort of thing and it's really really good and it's really interesting to see Mitchell's take on it. So the last narrative, like I said earlier, is kind of a post-apocalyptic and we follow Zachary um, and it's all tribal and it harks back to kind of viewing time with that and then we have Merinum who comes over from this other place to kind of like uh, watch on them and kind of make notes on them and everything and it's really interesting that one like I said it is quite difficult to get into but once you do you know it the language is so different to ours but it's really interesting how Mitchell creates this world each of the different narratives are all interlinked with one another both in kind of large and obvious ways such as um, each of the each narrative I think except one has the same comment comet birthmark somewhere on the bodies which kind of suggests they're all reincarnated and all interlinked with their lives um, but there are also kind of smaller less obvious examples like littered throughout the novel and Mitchell uses these links to question the validity of each narrative like I said coming back to post the fact that it's postmodernist you know you don't really know whether the narratives are true or not or how much truth they actually have so for example with Adam Ewing's narrative, you get a sense that it's very put on. He uses very verbose language, you know, it's all about how he's this daring explorer and he talks about how he wants his diary, you know, to be read by future generations, which it is, evidently. Um, but we get the sense that it's somewhat fake and very contrived. Um, and this idea is repeated later on, so like I said, with Somni, she was simply a clone. But in Zachary's narrative, she's, you know, the same level as our God or our Jesus and it's kind of suggesting that you know these thousands of years however many years have passed between these two narratives what gets distorted in human history there is also a film out which came out in 2012 I think uh, called About Cloud Atlas um, and I enjoyed it but I think you know it was quite difficult to make a film out of this sort of book you know when they're all interlinking and it does me, it does emphasise more on the reincarnation than Mitchell does in his book, but it's still very good. You should definitely watch it and I really, really enjoyed the soundtrack. The soundtrack is beautiful. You really I would definitely suggest picking up and reading Cloud Atlas. It's not the easiest thing to read, especially uh, Adam Ewing's narrative. Like I said earlier, it's very verbose and you just, lots of people I know kind of put it down after they've read, you know, a few pages because it's just so difficult to get into. But once you're in it, you know, you get used to it and you get kind of really into the world that Mitchell's creating. So that's my Cloud Atlas book review for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you read Cloud Atlas or any other, any other David Mitchell books. Um, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.